Hey guys, Joey here with AwesomeCameras.com. Just wanted to make a video to show you how I make my little 3D images I've been posting on my website and on Tumblr. They're shot with a Nishika N8000. Little camera, it's got four lenses on it. So first thing you're going to want to open your image should look something like this because it's shot with the four lenses all right next to each other. And first thing I like to do, we're going to be working with layers. First thing I like to do working with layers, your background layer here has a little lock symbol. It means it's locked. So to unlock that, all you got to do, make a copy, and then just trash the locked one. So then we can, we're can we free to do pretty much anything. Uh, first off, we'll get right into it here. Copy. What you're going to want to do is get your marquee tool. Select the second image, and I'm using shortcuts here. You're going to want to copy and paste it. So Control C, Control V, and then Move, which is this tool right here, or you can use the shortcut of V, and just drag that right over the first one. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. Uh, go back to the marquee. I'll get shortcut M on that. Select the third image copy oh sorry select the background layer here copy paste and then you can move it again select the background layer again and go back to the marquee tool here and select the fourth image and let's see copy and paste that and move that to overlay on the first image. So now basically you can see all four layers here are all stacked on the fourth side. What you want to do now is crop and just take out those other three. It doesn't have to be perfect. I usually leave an, a little extra just so you don't crop too far at this point. Uh, the little extra room will come in handy later. So crop that and then you're going to want to move this background layer up to the top. And now all four layers should be in order. One, two, three, four. Even though the numbers are different. It's background copy. One, two, three. And uh what you're gonna want to do now, zoom in quite a bit here. So you get your background copy selected. Move the opacity down. Anywhere around 50% is good. 45 to 55, anywhere in there. And you'll see you can see the first two layers here kind of looks like a double exposure. Uh, you're going to want to select layer 1 over here. Leave the background copy where it is. Select the first layer. Get your move tool. And you're going to want to find a little point somewhere. I'll use this, this star right here on her helmet. This one right here. You're going to want to move the layers so they overlay. And I'm looking for like the point of the star right here because you want something that's going to be easy, small enough and easy enough to line up all four layers. So I got those pretty good. You're going to hide layer one, select layer two. Do the same thing. Uh, I lost her little point star on that frame a little bit. And I'll just use this one. Get these two lined up. Hide layer two, select layer three, and do it again. And that looks pretty good. So then unhide those two layers, select the background copy, bring the opacity back up, and zoom out. And then if you want to, you know, double check it here, you can kind of hide that layer. You know, hide this one, hide this one. It's looking pretty good. Then go up here, window, open your timeline. Now we're going to start animating. I want to open the create frame animation. So, what I like to do here first is set the timing. And just the time I've come up with that works for me is 0.1 to uh, 12 hundredths of a second. Just personal preference. You could you can slow it down, speed it up, do whatever you want with that. And then this with four 
layers here, we're going to make six frames. So we have one, just this button here copies it. Click that five times, so you have six frames total. And then select the first frame. And what you want to do is make sure on that first frame, the only visible layer is this first layer here. Select the second frame, and then what you want is just the second frame visible. Do the same with the third. Hide that one. Fourth, you only want to see that fourth layer. And then what we want to do is we want it to loop back and forth. So the fifth frame is going back to the third layer here, and the sixth frame will go back to the second layer. So that when it loops, it loops back to the beginning. And then right here, repeat forever. And then you can zoom out a little bit and get a glimpse at your animation. And there it is. So we still got this dead space. We just crop. And it goes in about there. There's a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on this side. And crop that. And maybe come in a little bit on the top too. Crop that and hit play. And we've still got a, quite a bit on the right. Come in about there. And maybe a little more. All right. That's about it. What I like to do at this point is just hit save. It'll crop to image. Oh, cancel. All right. File. Save. And I like to save this PSD file just to have it on record. Um, go ahead and save that. And then to export, you have to go here. File. Save for web, there's a shortcut, control shift alt s. And then here's what you gotta do. Width I usually bring down to about 600 to start. And what I'm looking for here, if you're gonna post a Tumblr, you want this to be under a thousand, so under one megabyte, I guess. So I'll just keep going down, it's a little over. So I'll go 550 on the width, almost there. 525. It got it under a thousand. Okay, I found on Tumblr if this is over a thousand, uh, the image doesn't work right on Tumblr. It won't load. Uh, maybe they have limitations on how big the files can be. But then from there, you just hit save and save it, and then you're good to go. You can upload that to Tumblr. It should load pretty quick on any website you put it on. Uh, I will put some some additional notes in the video comments and feel free to ask any questions that you might have. See ya!